In this video, we're going to go over two visual ways of checking whether a dataset is normally distributed, or at least looks closely normally distributed. The first type of plot will look familiar. It's a histogram, and the second plot is a new plot. It's called a normal probability plot, and that's the one shown over here. A normal probability plot is also sometimes called a QQ plot or a normal quantile plot. In this first example, we're actually looking at what is the ideal normal distribution data set. We actually only have 40 observations here and the data set is symmetric. It also very closely follows the normal distribution. It's basically as close to a normal distribution as we can get with a data set of size 40. Now the plot on the left is the new one. This is the normal probability plot. There's two main components to this plot. The first is a horizontal direction and for this plot we basically can start to think of observations that would be perfectly normally distributed. And so we have some higher density in the middle, which corresponds to kind of the peak density for the normal distribution, and then it gets thinner out in the tails, and it's symmetric as well. And if our data set is actually perfectly normally distributed, this is the most ideal data set we would have, we'd also see something very similar for our data set over here. And then when we match up our perfect normal data set with our actual data set, we get these points and they'd fall along a perfect straight line. Now, no data set that we actually observe will be perfectly normally distributed. So what we're gonna observe is that observations tend to follow something close to this line if the data set is actually normally distributed, but it won't be perfectly along that line. So we're gonna take a look at several different examples to better understand that. With this first data set, we only have 40 observations. And if you look at the histogram on the right, we don't see anything that looks that normal. We have a gap, and we also don't have great symmetry. But with just 40 observations, that's not too surprising. When you look at a normal probability plot on the left, we see also some observations seem to be falling along the line, but there's also a handful that don't. So again, let's go through how we construct this plot. We have what would be a perfectly normally distributed data set, a data set that looks as perfectly normal as any data set can. And then we have our actual data set represented on the y-axis. And then for each point on the plot, we're just gonna take our first observation from the perfectly normal data set. And we're gonna line it up with the first observation from our actual data set. And then we're gonna do the same with the second observations. And third observations, and so on. So that's where all these different points come from. And the thing you really need to take away from this plot is how closely do the data need to fall to a straight line? So in this particular case, for just 40 observations, we see that a fair number of the observations fall closely to the line, but there's also some in the tails that might not. And if we take a look at another data set that has 40 observations, we can see this one actually has most of the points near the line. There's a few off on the upper end, that don't fall close to the line, but for the most part they do overall. And then another data set with just 40 observations. Here again, observations tend to fall close to the line, but certainly not perfectly on the line. So again, these were three data sets with 40 observations each. And these data actually are from a normal distribution in each case. Let's take a look at a data set with 100 observations. So if we look at our histogram, we see a distribution that's starting to look more normal than what we were seeing with our data sets of 40 observations. That makes sense. As we get more data, our distribution from our sample will look more like the actual distribution of the data. We also see that the points tend to, for the most part, fall closer to the line, but there are some deviations out on the lower end here again. And just a reminder, these are deviations from chance alone. The data shown here actually are from a normal distribution. If we look at another one with 100 observations, we can see most of the data tends to fall along the line. There are some deviations below, some deviations above as well. And one more data set with 100 observations. We have a little bit of deviation at the lower end, a little bit of deviation at the high end, but nothing too crazy. So let's take a look at a data set 
with 400 observations. Now with so many observations, our data points will tend to be closer overall to the line. This is the general rule of thumb. The more data that we have, the closer we expect the observations to be to this line if the data actually are normally distributed. In this particular case, nearly all of the data is very close along the line. We just have one that's very slightly off, but not very far off, especially relative to the deviations that we are seeing in the smaller data sets. If we look at another data set, we again see something similar. The points tend to fall close to the diagonal line with just a very small deviations at either end. And we see something similar again with our last data set that has 400 observations. The points tend to be close to the line with, again, just a little bit of deviation here and there. It might be helpful to rewind and compare what you see now with 400 observations with what we'd seen with 40 and 100 observation data sets before. But let's move on from here and look at a couple actual data sets. In this first data set, we're going to look at all 435 NBA players from the 2008-2009 season. So deviations that we should see in this line should be similar to what we had seen in the last three examples of the 400 observation data sets, if these data actually are normally distributed. So if we look at our normal probability plot, we see some stronger deviations from the line than what we'd seen before. We also see that for our y values, these are actually discretized. So that's because the observations are actually coming in whole inches. So we have people who are 70 inches tall, 71 inches tall, 72 inches tall, but we don't actually get reported values between those inches. The deviations that are strongest though are up here. If we think back to our data sets with 400 observations, we didn't see this kind of consistent deviation from the line in those other data sets. So this is suggesting that this data set isn't normally distributed. In this next data set, we're looking at poker earnings on each day for 50 days for a professional poker player. If you look at the normal probability plot, we see that if we had a straight line, we'd have something probably around here, and we're seeing deviations below, some deviations up here, but what really calls out this data set as not being normal are the outliers. So we have an observation up here, we also have uh, an observation here that's looking pretty suspicious. So this observation in particular is really strongly telling us this data set is not normally distributed, even though this isn't a very big data set. That's a very large deviation from the line. In this last example, we have two distributions, one of which is left skewed and one of which is right skewed, and we have to figure out which is which. I think the easiest way to figure out what the distribution of the data actually looks like from a normal quantile plot is to think about where the observations fall along the y-axis. For the left data set, we can see that there's a lot of observations that tend to fall close to zero. So here we have a lot of observations near zero, and then as we get to higher values, there's fewer and fewer observations. This is the characteristic of a right-skewed data set. So when we're seeing a data set like this, where we have some curvature up in the normal probability plot, we should expect this to be a right-skewed data set. On the other hand, when we look at the data set on the right, if we think about where points fall on the axis, we can see that there's just a few observations on the lower end, and then as we get to the higher values, we tend to have a lot more observations. So this is characteristic of a left-skewed data set. When we see this downward curvature in a normal probability plot, that's indicative of a left skewed data set. If this topic isn't extremely clear to you, that's okay, but you should be able to read the basics of a normal probability plot. If the observations tend to fall close to the line throughout, then that's a pretty good sign that the data are reasonably normally distributed. But if we see some observations that tend to fall far away from the line, that's an indication that the data probably aren't normally distributed. How far is too far is also dependent on the number of observations. And as you read more and more of these plots, you'll get a better sense of what is too far and what isn't too far. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up below 
And if you want to watch more videos from Open Intero, subscribe or check out our channel. Thanks for watching.